Hello and welcome to News 11. I'm Tabitha Graham. And I'm Heather Harris. Coming up, we'll update you on Hurricane Wilma's path of destruction. And later, we'll tell you about the latest ruling about whether you need to show your ID to vote. News 11 starts now. Forecasters are warning that Hurricane Wilma could pose a significant threat to Florida by this weekend. Wilma is a dangerous Category 5 storm right now, churning in Western Caribbean with winds of 175 miles per hour. CNN's Dave Krishner has more. Go somewhere else, go into the Gulf and disappear. Florida residents, weary from repeated lashings from strong hurricanes the past two years, are being told by the National Hurricane Center Wilma may be on its way. I don't know which direction it's going, and I want to be prepared. In just one day, Wilma evolved from a tropical storm into what the National Hurricane Center says is likely the most intense Atlantic hurricane ever recorded, a Category 5 monster with sustained winds of 175 miles per hour. The Hurricane Center projects the storm will head northwest for a few days, then turn northeast toward Florida. Four days ahead of a U.S. landfall projected by the Hurricane Center, local officials are ordering visitors to evacuate the Florida Keys. Across South Florida, residents are concerned about the havoc Wilma could wreak. This tree could easily go this way if we get another storm. The Hurricane Center warns people in South Florida to closely monitor Wilma's progress. For Thursday, Thursday I'll know what to do better than today. I'm Dave Kirshner reporting from Atlanta. In international news, it is the trial Iraqis have been waiting for. Saddam Hussein must answer for alleged crimes against humanity concerning the massacre of more than 140 people in the town of Dujail. CNN's Sumi Das has this report. A defiant Saddam Hussein entered court today and refused to identify himself when asked by the presiding judge. I don't answer this, what is called... Uh, a court with all due respect and I reserved my constitutional right as a president of the country of Iraq. The head lawyer for the deposed Iraqi dictator says he was only told about the scheduled court date about three weeks back. Khalil Dulemi says most of his fellow defense attorneys aren't adequately skilled in international law and proceedings of this scale. The court adjourned until November 28th. Also appearing before the Iraqi Special Tribunal are seven others, including the former Iraqi Vice President and Hussein's half-brother, who served as his advisor. The eight defendants pleaded not guilty to charges of ordering the 1982 killings of over 140 people and the torture of scores more in the city of Dujail following a failed assassination attempt on the then Iraqi president. As Saddam Hussein was escorted out of the courtroom, the former Iraqi leader continued to exhibit his defiant side, staring, shoving and shouting at guards. The U.S. ambassador to Iraq, Zalmay Khalilzad, said the trials will help pave the path to a democratic and independent Iraq. In Washington, I'm Sumi Das. A federal court is barring Georgia from enforcing a new state's law requiring voters to show photo identification at the polls. In the ruling yesterday, the U.S. District Court in Rome agreed with critics who claimed the law amounted to an unconstitutional poll tax. The U.S. Justice Department approved the law in August, which sparked racial tension during the state's legislative session last spring. Most of Georgia's black lawmakers walked out at the state capitol when it was approved. Delta Airlines will add new European destinations to fly from Hartsfield-Jackson Airport in Atlanta. Flights will take off to countries such as France, Italy, Greece, Denmark, and Germany. Delta will also add flights to Israel, the C Caribbean, and Latin America. Delta's purpose for the new flight is to recover from its financial struggle, as well as to become the largest transatlantic carrier. The new flights will take effect next spring. 
Governor Sonny Perdue says Georgia has received a commitment from Medicare and Medicaid services for 100% reimbursement for medical services provided to Medicaid eligible victims of Hurricane Katrina residing in Georgia. Georgia officials have accepted more than 13,000 applications from Hurricane Katrina victims for financial Medicaid assistance. The evacuee status includes parents, pregnant women, children under age 19, individuals with disabilities, and some, lo some low-income individuals. New York is the Big Apple, Philadelphia has brotherly love, and Atlanta is, well, you fill in the blank. Mayor Shirley Franklin and members of the Brand Atlanta team have spent $1.9 million to give Atlanta its own brand. The first phase of the brand is a swirling red logo with three words, opportunity, optimism, and openness. For two million, the city is getting more than three words. There's a song as well. Next week on Monday Night Football, the song will be unveiled as the Atlanta Falcons take on the New York Jets. And the unveiling of the slogan will be in November. Coming up, we'll tell you about a Lanier County drug bust. And Holly Willis will join us with sports. Stay with us. You have coverage if that tree in your front yard ends up in your living room. Seat belts protect you in the event of an accident. You go through life being protected in dozens of ways. And if you're an investor, your personal safety net includes the Securities Investor Protection Corporation. It is there to return your securities in the unlikely event that your brokerage firm fails. That almost never happens. But don't you feel better knowing that the SIPC is there for you if you need it? It's springtime in the forest of the black-tailed deer. The young male is feeling playful. It's time for tag. The female flicks her ears. Her way of saying, catch me if you can. Be part of a growing movement. Tree City USA. We care for our town's trees. And we plan for their future. Support Tree City USA where you live. Go to arborday.org to learn which trees to plant where. You can find out how to contact your state forester for community forestry assistance. Help the Arbor Day Foundation plant more trees across the nation. Plant a tree today for all the world to share. Go to arborday.org. Drug agents found over 100 bags of cocaine, nearly 200 bags of marijuana, and other drug paraphernalia at a Lakeland home. The street value of the drugs total about $67,000. This is the second big drug bust in Lanier County in two weeks. Recently, investigators found dozens of fully matured marijuana plants worth about $175,000 growing on the south end of the county. Valdosta State University is renaming its biology and chemistry building the Hugh C. Bailey Science Center. Dr. Bailey was VSU's sixth president and worked for the institution for 23 years. Current VSU president Ronald Zachary says that during Dr. Bailey's leadership at VSU, the university grew in enrollment, faculty, and facilities. A formal naming ceremony will take place next spring. The decision to rename the building happens during the Board of Regents' monthly meeting in mid-October. The Metropolitan Atlanta Rapid Transit received a major financial boost for its bomb detection dog program Monday. Officials from Walmart presented MARTA police with a $25,000 donation to help cover expenses. The dogs are trained to sniff bombs and explosive materials. Officials hope the donation will allow MARTA to expand its dog program. A developer is proposing building a massive indoor water and amusement park in DeKalb County's Stonecrest District. The application filed Monday with the Department of Community Affairs calls for a project that would include a 70,000 square foot water park and a 140,000 square foot indoor amusement park. In addition, the application calls for a 400 room hotel, a 6,500 seat performing arts center, retail space, and an office building. If approved, the development would be built over four to five years. 
When you mention allergy season, most people think of spring, but the fall is an unpleasant time of the year for many allergy sufferers. CNN's Christy Fagg looks at why. Robert Petrick knows about allergies. Sometimes it feels like you have a constant cold, not the kind of cold or uh, leading up to a flu that would necessarily keep you away from work, but that kind of uh, drag on you. Patrick's allergies get so bad he has to carry medication with him wherever he goes. He's one of many people who suffer from fall allergies. Allergy experts say it's an allergy season that has become just as active as the spring. That's because fall is the perfect time for allergens to grow and ragweed is everywhere. The weed pollen is a very irritating pollen and it's the main source of fall allergy problems. And there's mold. Humid fall weather encourages mold growth. It's in all kinds of things, gutters, soil, vegetation, rotting wood, and fallen leaves. Those pollen and mold spores can get stirred up when mowing the lawn or raking leaves. Robert Petrick loves to garden and uses medication to help him through the day. But allergists say if you're a fall allergy sufferer, stay inside during the morning hours between 5 and 10 a.m. That's when pollen counts are the highest and keep away from doing things outdoors on very dry days. For airborne allergens like pollen, rain tends to keep pollen levels down. And if you're one of those sufferers from mold allergies, stay inside during the afternoons when mold spore counts tend to peak. I'm Christy Feig reporting from Washington. When we come back, Holly Willis has the sports. But first, here's a quick look at your local weather. Stay with us. On the premises. Good 20, we're on it. Just roll. In there. Yeah, we'll handle this, man. Hmm. What? We're ready to be very civil about this. Mm -mm. You never know when a polyp is going to show up. Get the polyp early and stop colon cancer before it even starts. Just get a test from your doctor. Get the test, get the polyp. Nice surgeon's touch. Get the cure. This little light of mine, I'm gonna shine this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine in these turbulent times let us not erode the liberties our country was built on let it shine I am the port the storm Coast Guard or Coast Guard Reserve. Alice joins us now with sports. Thanks, Heather. Valdosta State football coach Chris Hatcher will be inducted into the Division II Football Hall of Fame later this year. The induction ceremony will be December 9th as part of a combined Harlan Hill Trophy and Hall of Fame banquet in Florence, Alabama, which will precede the Division II National Championship game. Hatcher will be joined by Ronald Moore, who played at Pittsburgh State in the early 90s, and South Carolina standout Donnie Shell, who played in the early 70s. Hatcher is the second VSU inductee, following Jesse Tuggle, who was inducted in 2002. The Valdosta State football team traveled to West Alabama for another conference matchup on Saturday. The Blazers jumped to an early 17-0 lead and led 24-6 at the half. VSU survived four turnovers to clinch the win 31-19. Junior Barrett Wilkes competed, completed 31 of 40 passes for 338 yards and three touchdowns. Wilkes was also named Gulf, Gulf South Conference Offensive Player of the Week for his performance. He leads the league in total offense and is second in passing. This is the second time this season that Wilkes has received this honor. 
The Velasa State golf team is rapidly improving as their season rolls along, improving their fall record to 14 and 21. Yesterday, the Blazers won the St. Leo Invitational at the Lake Javita Golf Club in Dade City, Florida. The team was six over the 294 course in the final round to win the four-team Invitational by 14 shots. VSU's Josh Tompkins led the Blazers and medaled, finishing at 2 over 218. Other Blazers' top 10 finishers were Nathaniel Bolanus, Blake Desaire, and Bobby Dyer. VSU will travel to Palm Beach Gardens, Florida on Sunday for the Nova Southeastern Fall Invitational. The VSU softball team added two more wins to their fall season on Friday when they beat the Phillies of ABAC Junior College 4 to nothing and 10 to 6. The second game went into eight innings when the Blazers' bats woke back up, scoring four runs. VSU was able to go three up, three down in the bottom of the eighth to clinch the win. The Blazers will wrap up their fall season on Sunday, October 30th, when they travel to Tallahassee to face Florida A&M University. With Coach Yarbrough's departure to southeastern Louisiana, the Blazers were forced to look for a new basketball coach. News 11's Edtuan Myrie goes to the complex to see this year's basketball squad. We're now in the stretch run of football season. That can only mean one thing. A new basketball season is approaching. But this year, players won't be the only new faces on the bench. Coach Heffer brings a winning philosophy to VSU winning nearly 200 games at his former school, Southern Polytechnic State University. But coach philosophy may be a tad bit different than what Blazer players are used to. We're up-tempo, but I think it's a little bit of a misconception that you know, because we're up-tempo that we're not going to guard people or we're not going to put pressure. Defensively, we're going to get after you. We just to try to create a higher possession number of game, and therefore, because of the higher possessions, we score and average more points. So, but we're going to play defense, and we're going to get after you in the half court and in the full court. There are currently 17 players on the Blazers squad, but style of play isn't the only reason for the deep bitch. Not so much as much as we're giving some kids opportunity, uh, some walk-on situations to give them an opportunity to be on the team and to be involved. And you know, we're in the process of making decisions and of who would play out of those 17. But anytime you're going to play more up tempo, you need more players. So it'll definitely help us. Former head VSU coach Yarbrough won 97 games in five years at VSU. New coach Mike Helfer won 186 games in eight years at his former school, along with two consecutive conference championships. Blazer basketball has taken the next step towards being a national contender, with Coach Helfer leading the way. For News 11, I'm Eto Amari. The Valdosta State Blazer volleyball team's road trip last weekend didn't turn out how they had expected. The Blazers dropped two 3-0 decisions to Alabama, Alabama Huntsville and 7th ranked North Alabama. The Blazers also lost to West Florida last night in three games. The West Florida Argonauts won 30-24, 30-19 and 30-22. This loss drops the Blazers to 8-19 and 1-9 in conference play. VSU's next matchup will be against Albany State tomorrow night. The Atlanta Hawks are wearing black shoulder patches on their uniforms today to honor Jason Collier, their teammate who died over the weekend. They're also dedicating this season to him. Meanwhile, a visitation took place Tuesday night for Collier ahead of Wednesday's funeral. The 28-year-old center died early Saturday morning after having trouble breathing at his home. It will be at least another day, possibly longer, before we know why 28-year-old Atlanta Hawks center Jason Collier died. Forsyth coroner Lauren McDonald says autopsy results won't be released until after Collier is laid to rest on Wednesday. Even then, the coroner warns that more tests need to be performed before they have an official cause of death for Collier. The coming Georgia resident died early Saturday morning at his home. His wife says he complained about having trouble breathing. She called the paramedics, but Collier died on his way to the hospital. The seven-foot NBA player had no reported health conditions. In fact, Atlanta Hawks general manager Billy Knight says Jason Collier passed his preseason physical. 
Now Collier's family anxiously await test results. They say it's important to detect any hidden health problems because he does have children who have his genes. And that's all for sports this week. Back to you, Heather. Thanks, Holly. We'll tell you how South Georgia is promoting breast cancer awareness. Stay with us. Is coming. There's no escape from the day you retire. And will you be ready financially? Are you ready, dear? You still can be with investments like an IRA or a retirement plan at work. It's never too late. But start now, because if you wait... You're making a grave mistake. You may wind up working forever. <laughs> Saving for your financial future doesn't have to be a nightmare. Choose to save. Properly inflating my tires burns less fuel and saves me money on gas. Yeah, I'm saving Mother Nature from pollution, but more importantly, she saved me 11 bucks. Ow! Environmental Defense, get green. By keeping my car regularly tuned, I save money on gas and repairs. That also means cleaner air. You know, feels good to help save the cash planet. Environmental Defense, get green. For more tips, go to getgreen.com. Valdosta State University, Georgia's regional partner, combining classroom and research opportunities, giving students the skills they need to achieve in a new millennium. From water purification research to archeological excavations, Valdosta State students and professors work together in the laboratory and in the community. Hands-on learning, real-world research. Valdosta State University is Georgia's regional partner. As part of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, South Georgia Medical Center is hosting many activities to paint Valdosta pink and promote breast cancer awareness in honor of National Mammography Day. This Friday, the hospital is sponsoring a Taiwan On campaign, which promotes the breast cancer pink ribbon. Ribbons will be given out at businesses and schools throughout Valdosta. The ribbons should either be placed on car antennas or pinned on clothing. The City of Valdosta will host the 2006 Georgia Downtown Conference. The conference will be held in historic downtown Valdosta next October and is expected to bring over 200 people to the town for three days. Main Street directors and downtown development authorities from all over the state will meet to share revitalization ideas. Valdosta competed against Moultrie and Statesboro to host the convention. This year, Madison hosted the statewide event. This week in VSU News, Valdosta State will present an Adults Back to College seminar tomorrow at 6 p.m. in the Continuing Education Center, Room 240. The seminar is aimed at adults 25 and older who are interested in starting or completing their college degree. VSU will honor over 700 of its staff and administrators at the 7th Annual Staff Appreciation Day on Friday. The day will include a cookout, entertainment, friendly competitions, door prizes, and an array of tables hosted by various VSU groups. And VSU is joining thousands of colleges across the nation in recognition of National Collegiate Alcohol Awareness Week. Events tonight include mocktails being served by Greek Life, a discussion about alcohol in Lowndes Hall, and the Farber Medical Center will answer questions during Sex in the Dark in the Ashley Rotunda. This coming Saturday, Valdosta is getting cleaned. A community cleanup entitled Keep Lounge Valdosta Beautiful will take place at the Craig Center on Gordon Street. The event is in support of Make a Difference Day, a national event that happens on the fourth Saturday of every October. Make a Difference Day is about putting your own needs aside to help others and any and all volunteers are welcome to participate. The cleanup is from 8.30 to noon. Trick-or-treaters have an option for getting candy this Halloween. The Lowndes County Sheriff's Office will host its fourth annual Safe Halloween Party from 5 to 9 p.m. October 31st at the Sheriff's Office on Madison Highway. All public safety agencies in the county will be present to hand out candy. The Sheriff's Office will request a $1 donation per person to support the Sheriff's Boys Ranch in Hayhira. Five to 7,000 people are expected to attend this year. 
That's all we have tonight. I'm Heather Harris. And I'm Tabitha Grant. Have a great week. Hello and welcome to News 11. I'm Colleen McBee. And I'm Heather McLeod. Coming up, we'll tell you about the Southern Cold Snap. And later, we'll tell you about a local treasure discovery. And I'm Tabitha Grant. October is Breast Cancer Month, and we're going to show you just how to paint the town pink. News 11 starts now. Valdosta residents woke up to a chilly morning today as a Canadian cold snap has reached all the way across the southern states. But if you think it's cold here, take a look at Virginia. <laughs> Yesterday, the state got its first blast of wintry weather for the season. About three inches of snow fell in Nelson County. Much of the state is also seeing gusty winds and rain. Forecasters predict more snow showers tomorrow, with up to several inches of accumulation in the mountains in the Allegheny Highlands. The governor's office and the Georgia Department of Education recognized 317 state schools for improving student academic achievement. The awards include recognition banners and certificates from Georgia's single statewide accountability system for these high achieving elementary, middle, and high school students. The award structure combines criteria for making adequate yearly progress with the gains of student achievement. Five schools out of the over 300 won both awards. Atlanta police say one person died and the northbound lanes of Interstate 85 were shut down after a wrong-way driver caused an accident early Tuesday morning. Witnesses began to call 911 prior to the crash, saying they had spotted the wrong-way driver. Authorities have not released any names. However, police do have a suspect in custody. Former U.S. House Speaker Newt Gingrich is calling for a decrease of foreign energy sources. Last night, a keynote address by Gingrich called for the U.S. to pursue new technologies to curb the U.S.'s appetite for foreign energy. Gingrich spoke at an industry event hosted by Ren the Renai Corporation, which makes tankless water heating technology. According to estimates from the Energy Information Administration, in two decades, the U.S. energy consumption will increase by nearly 40%. As a part of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, South George Medical Center is hosting many activities to paint Valdosta pink and promote breast cancer awareness. News 11's Tabitha Grant has more. October is Breast Cancer Month and the city of Valdosta is painting the town pink. Last night at the Pearlman Cancer Center, people gathered for breast cancer awareness. October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month gets a lot of publicity and a lot of press, but it's important for women to know that around the clock, around yearly, they need to follow up with their mammograms, their screening, their, their self-breast exams, uh, and not just this month, which is where it gets so much press and national attention, they need to make sure they're, they're vigilant throughout the rest of the year. After the presentation, we talked with a breast cancer survivor who appreciates Breast Cancer Month. October has been our Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I really do feel like we have done an excellent job in the community getting the message out for the women to come forth and to get this proper screening done. Outside of the South Georgia Medical Center, there are many organizations supporting the cause. Our nationals this year sent us the, um, the big drop boxes, and we have those set up in the biology building and in West Hall and in Nevins Hall, and it's to collect the top of the Yoplait yogurt lids, and each lid um, that we collect donates five cents to the Susan G. Komen Foundation and the Race for the Cure. I'm Kim Rowell, and I'm a breast cancer survivor about two years now, and I'm a member of the Best Buddies support group at Pearlman Cancer Center. We're selling candles for 
Relay for Life. All the proceeds go to the Relay for Life, which is in May, that um, everybody does nationwide. And um, we're going to be there $6 each. And they're made locally, so that supports um, Valdosta. Thank you. Thank you. Taking steps to fight breast cancer, Payless is one of the many establishments helping raise money for the cause. Although October is Breast Cancer Month, it is essential to get a regular checkup because the best protection is early detection. For News 11, I'm Tabitha Grant. Coming up, we'll tell you about a local auction of homes near VSU's campus. And Jamal Ferguson will join us with sports. Stay with us. They came from every corner of the country, from small towns and big cities. But they all shared one thing in common. They belonged to a family called Marines, a tough and determined few dedicated to protecting everything we hold sacred. And still, they come. Celebrate the history of those proud few who have earned the title Marine. Did you know you have the power to stop children from joining gangs? You can help a father find a job and home for his family. You can assist a woman who can't afford the medicine she needs to live and the home she can't live without. You can choose to make a difference. Support the programs that are working in our community. Contact Volunteers of America today. I'm Gary Sinise. In the movie Forrest Gump, I played Lieutenant Dan Taylor, a disabled veteran. But being a disabled vet is much more difficult. It often means a life of hardship, loneliness, and pain. You can help by volunteering at your local veterans hospital. You will brighten a disabled veteran's spirit and remember those who've sacrificed for our freedom. So please get involved and contact the disabled American veterans. As reported here on News 11, professional auctioneers held its auction of eight properties near VSU's campus on Saturday. Nearly 50 people showed up at the American Legion Post 13 to get the chance of purchasing one of these homes. Interested investors such as parents looking for property for their kids and real estate firms just looking for more property were all in the crowd. After nearly four hours of bidding, the properties were finally auctioned off at more than $1 million to four individuals and one local real estate firm. Traffic is getting back to normal on I-75. The Georgia Department of Transportation has announced that there will be no lanes closed on Interstate 75 in Lowndes County from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Fridays, 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. on Saturdays, and 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sundays. The department says that nearly 100,000 cars travel through this section of the interstate during these peak travel times. St. John Catholic Church and School is holding its annual road race and fall festival this Saturday. The road race will include a 5K run and a one-mile nun run and tot trot. The races begin at 8.30 in the morning and are followed immediately by an award ceremony. Then the Halloween carnival will take place from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Additional events include a haunted house and a cakewalk. A 5,000-year-old treasure was rediscovered by an archivist in the storage room of VSU's Odom Library, a collection of 5,000-year-old Babylonian cuneiform clay tablets dating back from 2300 B.C. to 500 B.C. were originally acquired by Dr. Richard Holmes Powell, the first president of South Georgia State Normal College, or what we now know as VSU. The 10 tablets were intended to provide learning opportunities for preservation. Scanned copies of the tablet are available to view on, in the web, but they have not yet been interpreted. In medical news, the flu season is back and the Center for Disease Control says that too few Americans have gotten their flu shot. Many Americans are considered to be at high risk for the flu. Health and Human Services Secretary Michael Levitt says there is no reason for anyone to, de to delay getting the vaccine for this deadly virus. Last year, a little more than half a million Americans received the flu shot. The vaccine is made fresh each year to match circulating strains. The flu shot does not protect the public from getting avian flu. 
Have you thanked your VSU faculty and staff lately? The Council on Staff Affairs presented a Staff Appreciation Day this Friday to thank the VSU faculty and staff for all of their hard work. News 11's Heather Harris has more. Over 400 of Valdosta State University's faculty and staff gathered at the North Campus soccer field for the 7th Annual Staff Appreciation Day. The Council on Staff Affairs, also known as COSA, organized the event. COSA is the Council on Staff Affairs. We represent over 700 staff here at VSU on any issues that are concerned to them and we're the advisory to the president from the staff. The event included games, door prizes, and tables set up by VSU departments and local businesses. Uh, we got donations from Domino's Pizza, CC's out by the mall. We got tanning gift certificates from a couple of vendors in the city area. Um, food, food certificates were our biggest gift certificates. The university's Air Force ROTC presented the colors along with the singing of the national anthem while COSA members served barbecue dinners. Also, the Lowndes County Sheriff's Department demonstrated training drills from its canine training program. Overall, COSA members were pleased with the day's turnout. It's been a great turnout. We've had a lot of good staff, a lot of good fellowship. Lots of fun games, as you can hear in the background. People are just enjoying themselves. And this is our time to give back to each other as staff from our communities. Former Mayor James trash. Rainwater you proclaimed October 1st as Staff Appreciation Day at VSU seven years ago. For News 11, I'm Heather Harris. When we come back, Jamal Ferguson has sports. But first, here's a quick look at your chilly weather forecast. Stay with us. Somewhere around the world, there are men and women of the armed forces risking their lives, helping rebuild communities after natural disasters, collecting toys for needy children, tutoring kids in school. These are your sons and daughters who work to keep us safe, secure, and free. Dedicated men and women who put their country first. Valdosta State University, the pathway to success. I love VSU because from the moment I came here, it's just been like a second home. This place was just like home for me, and I love it. I'll always love it. Just above the Florida border, VSU is a second home for students from all over Georgia, 47 states, and 58 countries. A quality university degree, a unique second home, a great location. Valdosta State University, your pathway to success. Following the tragic events of September 11th, there have been hundreds of violent attacks against innocent Americans. Remember what that flag you're waving stands for. Remember, please stop the hate. We're stronger when we are united. Remember. Remember what that flag you're waving stands for. One nation. Under God. Indivisible. With liberty. And justice. For all. In America, there's either room for everyone, or it's not America. Don't pick the wrong fight. Let's keep America land of the free. Stop the hate. Jamal Ferguson joins us now with sports. Thanks, Heather. In World Series news, after the longest World Series game in history, lasting five hours and 47 minutes, Houston officially has a problem. After dropping the first two games in Chicago, the Astros put Roy Oswalt on the mound, hoping to shut the White Sox bats down. Oswalt did just that for four innings, with the Astros up 4-0 when the White Sox erupted for five runs in the fifth. The Astros even things up in the fifth and the eighth inning when Jason Lane doubled in Morgan Innsberg. Play continued on well past midnight in Houston until the 14th inning when Jeff Blum homered to left. The White Sox added an insurance run in the inning to take the lead by two and ultimately winning the game, taking themselves one way away from something that has not happened to this team in 86 years, the World Championship. Now to baseball, Braves baseball. The baseball offseason hasn't officially started, but the Braves are already losing key members to their team. 
Bobby Cox, right-hand man and pitching coach for the last 15 years, has left the team and taken the position as the pitching coach of the Baltimore Orioles. The New York Yankees were the first to ask the Braves for permission to speak with Mazzoni. Only days after the team lost game six of the division series to the Astros. When the Yankees were given permission by the Braves to speak with Mazzoni, the Orioles jumped on board also. Mazzoni is expected to earn about $500,000 a season in Baltimore. That is twice what he was earning in Atlanta. Despite a dismal performance by Atlanta Falcons, quarterback Michael Vick and the Falcons defense found a way to win Monday night against game against the New York Jets. Vick threw for three interceptions but rushed for two touchdowns in the Falcons' 27-14 win over the Jets. The Falcons defense forced three first-half turnovers that led to a 17-point lead and 20 unanswered points. Work done rushed for an amazing 155 yards and 24 carries gaining over six yards per carry. Michael Vick added two rushing touchdowns. The Falcons go into their back week with a 5-2 and two record. Their next game is Sunday, November 6th in Miami against the Dolphins. Now more local. The, Bra the Blazers are blazing hot in the last cold days of October. The Blazers have climbed to the number one in the Southeast Region poll after the win over North Alabama on Thursday night. VSU jumped to number one after St. Augustine State lost to Fayetteville State 45-28. Also, another uh, Blazer football player was named Golf Sovereign Conference Player of the Week. Place kicker Michael Green kicked four field goals in the longest being of 48 yards and also kicking two extra points. Greens lead the special team with 70 points, averaging 7.8 points a game. The Blazers will travel to Magnolia, Arkansas on Saturday to face the Mule Riders of Southern Arkansas University. The Valdosta State Blazers cross-country team traveled to Memphis, Tennessee this past weekend for the Gulf Conference Championship match on Saturday. The Lady Blazers finished 8th place in the women's 5K run with Melissa Daltrey finishing 18th for the individual results. On the men's side, the Blazers finished their 8K run on the 7th place with Andy Minix finishing individually 17th overall for the Blazers. Minix made second team all-conference for the Blazers while Melissa Daltrey also making second team all-conference for the Lazy Blazers to the finish out the 2005 season. The Blazers' next meeting is at the Southeast Regions on November 6th in Dade City, Florida. Now volleyball. VSU volleyball team spiked one down on the road but dropped two at home. The team defeated Albany State last Thursday night in Albany but dropped GSC matches to West Georgia and Lincoln Memorial over the weekend in the PE Complex. The Lincoln Memorial match went to five games and VSU frustrated five-game match history continued as the loss dropped the ladies to one of the five in GSC matches their own season. VSU is now 9-21 on the season and will travel to Butown Park on Thursday. And that's all we have for sports this weekend. Thank you, Heather. Thanks, Jamal. Coming up, we'll tell you about the VSU Music Department, Pops in the Park. Stay with us. I remember when it first hit me. Applied energy in a forward direction equals human locomotion. What does this all mean, Doc? Well, it changed life as we know it. I thought, wow. This concept might actually change the way we get from point A to point B. I felt like Einstein inventing the telephone. <clears throat> I give you the human foot. Get up, get out, get moving. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. There's a naval battle being fought on land by forces armed only with commitment and compassion. Because every day, Navy volunteers combat homelessness, hunger, loneliness, and illiteracy by initiating community programs that touch people's lives. And while their exploits aren't honored with medals, it's hard to imagine a more moving tribute. There is.
there's a better way to have fun with history. Come on, Louie. Focus, man. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. Saturday, local musicians lent their talents for a good cause. VSU's Pops in the Park. The event is to raise scholarship money for music majors. News 11's Kimberly Lake has more. Preparations were underway as guests arrived in anticipation of VSU's annual Pops in the Park. Pops in the Park is an annual fundraiser event sponsored by the Music Scholarship Alliance. It is an important fundraiser for special reasons. Uh, to appreciate all of the talent that there is in this music department and to realize that uh, they need scholarship money just like the football program and all the other programs at VSU and it's really important to be able to raise some money for our music department to uh, have that available. Pops in the Park began 10 years ago as one of two fundraisers for the Music Scholarship Alliance. Although the focus for the event is raising money, those involved in the musical performances had well wishes for those who listened to them. Well, it's, it's kind of like a, a relaxed environment. We come out, they have some dinner, we play for them, give us some money, and it's, it's just, I mean, try to convey an emotion through our music, but really it's just to just help, help them relax, have a good time. Yeah. And they did not disappoint. With a combination of good music, good food, and good company, Pops in the Park was a success. For VSU News 11, I'm Kimberly Lake. The Parking and Transportation Advisory Committee is discussing changes around the university and asking for feedback from the community. At a Monday meeting, City Engineer Von Shipman said traffic has decreased by 37% since Oak Street has become one way. He also said that the city is proposing to add new traffic lights to Patterson. Parking and Transportation Director Jill Farrell Roundtree discussed the possibility of adding a gate to the faculty parking lot that is under construction in front of Nevins Hall. If the lot becomes gated, then either a monthly or daily fee may be applied. One issue that will, that will be discussed in upcoming meetings is how to cover the $10 million cost of the parking garages that may be built in the near future. The issue will host a visitation day for prospective students and their parents this Saturday. The event is held by the university three times a year to allow high school juniors and seniors and transfer students to learn more about what the campus has to offer. Representatives from various departments will set up booths on the mezzanine level of the PE complex and guests will be treated to lunch at the Palms Dining Center. The issue will host, excuse me, the issue will be alive with Sound of Music on Saturday with the annual Choral Day in Whitehead Auditorium. Up to eight high school, junior, and senior colleges are expected to participate. The day will start at 8.30 with rehearsals and culminate at 3.30 p.m. with a performance by a mixed chorus, a woman's chorus, and a VSU premier choral group, the Chamber Singers. VSU's annual trick-or-treat event will be tomorrow from 5 to 6.30 p.m. at the University Union. VSU students, faculty, and staff are invited to bring their children who are 12 and under. The event will be filled with games, candy, and door prizes. A Kids Safe program will also be offered before the trick-or-treat activities at 4.30 p.m. Students showed up dressed for success yesterday at VSU's Fall Career Explosion. The event gave students the chance to meet with over 40 organizations to gather information and ask questions about post-graduation opportunities. Students strolled from table to table in search of internships, part-time and full-time work. Some of the businesses that were attended were Frito-Lay, Lowe's, and Hibbett Sports. The University of Georgia Graduate School and the Mercer University School of Law were also represented. Many students came with resumes in hand and left with packets of information and contact numbers of potential employers. Approaching, people are starting to decorate their homes. Of course, people are enjoying the pumpkins, skeletons, and goblins that appear on porches and the gory costumes that roam the neighborhoods. But we, mu we must remember through the fun and excitement of the holiday, the safety concerns need to be addressed. We have a few suggestions for staying safe this Halloween. First, wear reflected strips for bright clothing. Remember, with trick-or-treating going out in the evening, it's going to be dark. That's why you should always carry some type of illumination device, like a flashlight. Also, be sure to plan your child's trick-or-treat route in a familiar neighborhood. 
Of course, trick-or-treaters should make sure to travel in groups and of course to watch out for traffic while they're outside and they must more importantly have fun and load up on candy, chocolate, and Halloween treats. And remember, don't forget to set your clocks back for daylight savings time. I'm Colleen McPhee. And I'm Heather McLeod. Have a great week. Hello and welcome to News 11. I'm Sabrina Vasquez. And I'm Don Dudley. Coming up, we'll tell you about a shooting witnessed by a four-year-old. And later, we'll update, update you on a South Georgia County drug bust. News 11 starts now. A manhunt is underway at this hour after a Valdosta four-year-old witnessed his mother, mother's murder yesterday. She was allegedly shot by longtime boyfriend Yolanda Clayton. Deidre Miller was found shot to death in her car yesterday after she crashed into a tree in her neighbor's backyard. Investigators are trying to discover if she was shot before or after the car crash. Clayton took the child from the car and dropped him off at daycare. Daycare workers discovered blood on his clothing and contacted the authorities. Investigators are looking for a dark blue Chevy Avalanche with a Florida license plate number X25BTA. A drug bust in South Georgia has ended with five arrests. Members of the Gosher family are alleged cocaine suppliers to various drug dealers in South Georgia. Police say the Gozers ran their drug ring from their home located in a rural area of Brooks County. Kevin Lee of the Thomas County Vice Division says three members of the Gosher family, Valerie, Thomas, and Daniel, along with two others, are being held in a Doherty County jail awaiting arraignment. There are at least three more pending arrests in the investigation. Milledgeville's Halloween was a tragic one. Georgia State College and University sophomore Evan Philip Luke was stabbed to death early yesterday morning during an argument near campus. Milledgeville police arrested 21-year-old Christopher M. Lehman near the scene of the murder soon after it happened. They have charged Lehman with murder in connection with the stabbing. An investigation is still ongoing to discover what led to the stabbing, but it has been determined that it is likely that alcohol was involved. Luke was a management major and a member of Kappa Sigma fraternity. President Bush has nominated Circuit Court Judge Samuel Alito to replace Justice Sandra Day O'Connor on the High Court. Alito, a former U.S. attorney, has been a judge for 15 years and is considered a darling of the conservative movement. CNN's Suzanne Malvo has more. And the executive he was branch. the runner-up turned front runner. I'm pleased to announce my nomination of Judge Samuel A. Alito Jr. as Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. The man some are calling the anti-Myers, a judge who'd been on the short list counsel, since Mr. Bush first took office five years ago, advice. who quickly emerged as an early favorite after Justice Sandra Day O'Connor announced she'd be stepping down, taking a backseat to John Roberts and then cases. Harriet Myers. I've known Harriet for more than a decade. I know her heart. I know her character. While conservatives roundly rejected Myers for being an unqualified Bush crony with a scant judicial record, President Bush made a point to emphasize Not that to Alito had the judicial philosophy and qualifications the conservatives the were looking for. Judge Alito has served with distinction on that court for 15 years and now has more prior judicial experience than any Supreme Court nominee in more than 70 years. Friday afternoon, the president talked to Alito about the job before leaving for Camp David with Myers. White House insiders say the Alito nomination is the president's chance for a do-over, to give Republicans just the kind of red meat they've been looking for, to bring back the base, reunite the party, and save the president from becoming a lame duck. It's terrific news, and there's real energy in our base again. We're coming home, Mr. President. 
the president is now preparing to battle the Democrats and the potential for a filibuster. And I urge the Senate to act promptly on this important nomination so that an up or down vote is held before the end of this year. But political observers say the president has Today, been Judge substantially Leo weakened by, by the ongoing violence in Iraq, the slow response to Hurricane Katrina, and the recent indictment of one of his top aides. They say pushing his nominee and his legislative agenda will be challenging if he alienates moderates. I think his political capital will be narrow and weak unless he seeks to reach out to the great center of this country. This time, President Bush's appointment of Samuel Alito to fill the vacancy on the Supreme Court went over well with some VSU professors. Political science professor Dr. Mark Pufong said that this appointment is a vast improvement from Harriet Myers from a qualification standpoint, and there is no one that is more qualified. Alito, who is a well-known conservative and pro-state judge, has many feeling that his confirmation may tilt the power of the Supreme Court. Pufong feels that this is not as big of a problem as many people feel. Pufong also said the political standoff that will come from this appointment might be a strategy to draw attention away from current problems in the White House. Memorial services have been held for civil rights pioneer Rosa Parks in Alabama and Washington, D.C. since her death on October 24th. Parks was the first woman to lie in honor in the Capitol Building Rotunda. Today, her final memorial service will be held in Detroit, where Parks lived from 1957 until her death. Coming up, we'll tell you about a fatal beating of a University of Florida student. And Tommy Parker will join us with sports. Stay with us. Do you know how many kids are risking their health by eating unhealthy foods? stuffing themselves and not getting any exercise? Thank goodness, you got here just in time. Where's the problem? In there. Hey, what's going on? What are you doing? Here, try this, the original fast food. Doctors know that our children need a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, high-fiber vegetarian foods to help them grow up healthy. Call for a free booklet or visit kidsgethealthy.org. Our magnificent trees have helped shape the American spirit. Trees that clear the air and protect the land. Thick forests of pine, birch trees, and apples. One tree has been selected by the people to represent all of America's trees. The oak, America's national tree. Go to the Arbor Day Foundation website, arborday.org. See which oaks or other great American trees are right for planting where you live. Discover the oak, America's national tree. These kids are in trouble. They're not getting high on drugs or stealing. If they were, you'd do something about it right now. But why is it almost half of all parents who suspect their child has a problem learning wait a year or more before getting help? Why? Kids with learning disabilities are smart. They just learn differently. Call now. The sooner you get help, the better the chance your kid has. Five men have been charged with murder in the fatal beating of a University of Florida student in Jacksonville Saturday night. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office says three men held 23-year-old Thomas Brown down while two others beat him. Here's more on what's known and not known about the death and what Brown's friends have to say about him. I looked up to him because of all the work and, and effort that he put in, uh, you know, to life, to his friendship. Memories are now all 23-year-old Thomas Oliver Brown's friends have. Police say these five men are linked to Brown's death. Officers say just before 11 p.m. Saturday, two of them were beating Brown as three others cornered him. But investigators won't say who did what. Officers are also still searching for a motive. We're not certain if it had anything to do with the game itself or, uh, or anything involving uh, this particular uh, festive weekend. Brown, who was a senior studying building construction at UF, was in Jacksonville for the game. Well, Sam is a good time just talking to him and just like he just seems so happy. Friends say they got separated and were supposed to meet back up, but Brown never showed. Officers say witnesses called 911 after seeing the suspects beating Brown outside the CSX building in Jacksonville. A brawl, officers say, was all caught on surveillance video. With Brown lying unconscious, sheriff's officials say witnesses saw the men take off in a taxi. We found the, found the taxi and was able to uh, 
pull the uh, taxi driver over and take these individuals into custody. Even with his accused killers locked up, Brown's friends are far from at ease, trying to cope with the loss of someone with big shoes to fill. Those who know him, we call him Paul Bunyan. Um, he was uh, that big in our eyes. He uh, made any task uh, you know, feasible. He was just a good guy. He was always dependable, and that's you know that's why we loved him. He was he's always fun to be around too. Um, but like I said, he was a hard worker. He's working to put himself through college. Brown was a member of Beta Theta Pi fraternity. The group is looking to hold a memorial service for him, but a date has not yet been set. Ghosts and gremlins may have been out on the town Monday night, but criminals were not. Valdosta enjoyed a quiet Halloween this year. Valdosta Police Department reports that there were no major criminal activity in the area. Incidents were limited to minor traffic accidents, petty theft, and a few car thefts. In order to avoid crowds at the polls, Valdosta residents have until Friday to vote in advance. Voting is taking place at the Board of Elections on Patterson Street from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And tune in to VSU Channel 11 beginning at 8 p.m. Tuesday night for live election coverage. For all of you getting behind the wheel for the first time, the Department of Driver Services has added a practice test on their website to help new drivers prepare for the Georgia's driver's license test. The DDS Commissioner Greg Dozier says the practice test will help Georgians become safer drivers. The test questions will consist of comprehension and critical judgment. Cystic fibrosis is a relatively rare inherited disease that affects the lungs and digestive system. One local development company is taking steps to aid finding a cure. News 11's Tabitha Grant has more. Ambling Companies Incorporated is a group of interrelated organizations dedicated to providing high quality, unique housing solutions throughout the city of Valdosta. Uh, Ambling started uh, in the early 90s. Uh, and then uh, consolidated into more of a group of companies in the middle 90s. We started out as primarily low-income housing or affordable housing, if you will, developers in the state of Georgia. Uh, we broadened our perspective and, and went out of the state of Georgia into Florida, South Carolina, Tennessee, North Carolina, those places. Um, uh, later on in the, late, in the 90s, we decided that uh, we need to be a little bit more diversified. We saw an opportunity in the student housing arena. Outside of the housing options, the Ambling Company is also known for its fundraising abilities. Last Thursday, the Ambling Company held its first annual shrimp and oyster dinner to raise money for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. People gathered for food, fun, and live entertainment. The fundraiser sold 370 tickets and pushed the Ambling Company closer to their goal of raising $120,000. This event was just a stepping stone towards a much bigger fundraiser, the Great Strides Walk. On Saturday, November 12th, people will gather at Wild Adventures to take steps to cure cystic fibrosis and aid the Ambling Company with completing their goal. For News 11, I'm Tabitha Grant. In medical news, the bird flu has struck more than 120 people worldwide, killing half of them. Now President Bush unveils a plan to fight a pandemic. Christopher, CNN's Christopher King has details. President Bush is asking Congress to spend more than $7 billion in emergency funds to protect the country against a possible pandemic of avian flu. In a speech at the National Institutes of Health, the president said while no massive outbreak currently exists, there is reason for concern. If the virus were to develop the capacity for sustained human-to-human -human transmission, it could spread quickly across the globe. Political observers say now is the right time for the president to unveil his plan. This is something that he's got to respond to uh, at this point, that people are starting to get their flu shots. The flu season uh, is upon us, so it is a very appropriate time. The president's new strategy calls for stockpiling vaccine and antiviral drugs and improving the ability to produce new vaccine. This initiative will help us rapidly detect, quantify, and respond to outbreaks of disease in humans and animals and deliver information quickly to state and local and national and international public health officials. Democratic opponents call the move a first step, but they say the president needs to do more. They've acted late, they've acted too little, and they have not recognized that simply having vaccine available doesn't mean it will get where it's needed. In Washington, I'm Christopher King. 
According to the most recent data report from the CDC, the number of Americans with diabetes has increased by 2.6 million since 2002. Diabetes is the sixth leading cause of death in the U.S., and one concern is that more than 6 million people are unaware of their illness. The study suggests that an additional 1.5 million Americans aged 20 and older will be newly diagnosed this year. People can prevent or delay diabetes by exercising 30 minutes a day and by maintaining a low-calorie and low-fat diet. When we come back, Tommy Parker joins us with sports. But first, here's a quick look at your local weather. Stay with us. Valdosta State University, in service to its students. The professors here at Valdosta State University really give us a lot of hands-on experience. The professors are easy to understand and they're enthusiastic about teaching. They really um, help the students. They do everything they can to make sure that you get the education you need. They always bent over backwards to help me out. Providing a premier educational experience, Valdosta State University is Georgia's regional partner. Nearly half of today's military are National Guard and reservists. However, they can't answer our nation's call without their employer's support. If you're an employer, visit ESGR.org and find out how to do your part. After all, their response depends on yours. Tommy Parker joins us now with sports. Thanks, Don. The Valdosta State foot Blazer football team was down by 12 points at halftime against the Mule Riders of Southern Arkansas on Saturday, but they were determined not to let this conference matchup slip through their fingers. VSU rallied for 30, 20 third quarter points to take the lead and held on for 44 to 41 win over Southern Arkansas. The Mule Riders racked up 615 yards and the Blazers came up with 504 yards with 358 in the second half. Junior Barrett Wilkes completed 18 of 26 passes for 294 yards and a touchdown. The Blazers will complete, complete their regular season Saturday when they welcome the, Bra the Braves of West Georgia University. If the Blazers win, they will be the conference champs and will begin postseason play on November 12th. The Blazers softball team traveled to Tallahassee this weekend to finish up their fall season, but it didn't turn out how they had hoped. VSU dropped its first game to Chipola Junior College after VSU's Melissa Santana was called out at home on a controversial play. In the second game, VSU could bring their bat, couldn't bring their bats to life and failed to Tallahassee Community College one to nothing. TCC scored their one run on an error in the final game of the night. The Blazers tied with the Rattlers of Florida a and University when the FAMU coach said that her team had other things to do. VSU finished their fall season at five wins, two losses, and one tie. The Blazers will begin the regular season play in early February. As the Lady Blazers basketball team prepares for its season opener, they know they have a lot to live up to. VSU has been chosen to defend its Gulf South Conference Eastern Division Championship. They received four first place votes from coaches all over the conference and beat out West Florida by one point. 5'11 senior Candace Farrell was chosen as the representative for the preseason all-conference all team, averaging 11.7 points a game. The men's basketball has been picked to finish third behind Montevallo and West Georgia, plus added John Rogers and Mike Crane to the preseason all-conference team. Both teams will open their season on November 15th at Florida Tech. 
Atlanta Hawks center John Coria died October 15 at the age of 28 after having trouble breathing in his home. The autopsy showed the cause of death to be from an enlarged heart. Chief medical examiner for the GBI doctor, Chris Sperry, held a press conference to explain the autopsy. Examiner for the state of Georgia, and I'm here to give a brief statement about what we have found regarding the death of Jason Collier. During the course of our autopsy examination, we examined the heart and also all of the other organs. And we also obtained medical records uh, that were provided to us through the Forsyth County Coroner's Office in their investigative capacity. We found that he had an abnormally enlarged heart that was much larger than a normal sized heart, even for an athlete and a man of his size. Also, there were other uh, medical problems with the heart itself. There's an abnormal valve and uh, some abnormal structures in the heart that we're examining even further. We've also submitted specimens of blood and other heart tissues for analysis uh, to laboratories at the Mayo Clinic and at Harvard Medical School to look for some of the genetic abnormalities that are sometimes associated with heart disease of this type. We found no evidence of any drugs or chemicals or any uh, substances in his blood that would have either caused or contributed to his death. And so finally, the cause of Jason Collier's death was a sudden heart rhythm disturbance or a cardiac arrhythmia that was caused by abnormal enlargement of the heart and other uh, associated developmental abnormalities of the heart. And that's all for sports this week. Back to you, Don. Thanks, Tommy. And coming up, we'll tell you about a fundraiser for a local Valdosta girl. Stay with us. I'm Joan Chen with a message for people of all nationalities who come to America for what it has to offer including protection from discrimination when you want to rent or buy a home. It is against the law for anyone to deny you housing because of your national origin, the color of your skin, or the size of your family. Know your rights and use them. If you've been treated unfairly when it comes to housing, contact HUD for help. HUD is on your side. I'm a sophomore in college this year. Man, if you had known me when I was a sophomore in high school, nobody could tell me anything. I gave all my teachers a bad time. They all gave up on me, except my English teacher. Eight years teaching high school English, 10 years in recovery for alcohol addiction. To be or not to be? I got help. That's it right there. When you get help, who knows just who you'll help along the way. For drug and alcohol information and treatment referral for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Hey, turn the TV on. <sighs> Even if it runs on electricity, runs on fuel because most electricity comes from burning fossil fuels well honey don't flood it i'm not flooding it fortunately appliances with the energy star label are more efficient which means lower utility bills while cutting down on global warming and air pollution so look for products with the energy star label energy isn't all you're saving i think it might need a tune-up Valwood School is planning a 5K, 10K, and one mile fun run and walk on Saturday, November 12th to support Valwood student Victoria Newsom. The eight-year-old battles me megablastoma since January 2004. Baptist Health System cancer technologists say that megaloblastoma is a small blue cell cancer of the eye. It is the most common solid tumor of a child and accounts for 10 to 20 percent of all central nervous system tumors in children. Anyone interested in participating should contact Valwood School. Do you want to become computer literate but can't afford to take a class? The Valdosta Lowndes County Library will hold four free 50-minute computer classes this month. The first class, Introduction to the Internet, begins tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Reservations are required. For more information, call the library at 333-0086, extension 220. Valdosta Main Street is hosting the second annual Lofts and Lifestyles downtown tour, tour of homes Saturday from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. The tour begins at Hildegard's where the tickets will be on sale for $10 until 4 p.m. After purchasing tickets from Hildegard's, participants are free to tour the lofts featured at their own pace. The City of Valdosta is now encouraging citizen input for the Greater Lounge Comprehension Plan. The City and local area governments are working with the South Georgia Regional Development Center to develop the plan set to be put into action in the year 2030. 
The plan is a document that helps guide growth and development in our community. Citizens can participate by attending public meetings and through the SGRDC website. All residents of Lowndes County in the cities of Valdosta, Hayhira, Lake Park, Dasher, and Remerton are encouraged to attend. Valdosta will be hosting a Safety Awareness Month kickoff in Scott Park this Saturday. The event starts at 10 a.m. and will last until 1 p.m. The events will host information booths, entertainment, and free food. The city organization will also offer free information sessions. For more information, visit the Valdosta City website. The event is hosted by the Valdosta Lounge Recreation Park and Community Affairs Department. In VSU News, the Housing and Residence Life hosted a a rededication ceremony for Lowndes Hall yesterday. VSU President Ronald Zachary spoke about the Lowndes renovation process as well as the current renovation of Patterson Hall. Following the President's speech, guests enjoyed all the different types of food. Associate Housing Director Leah Hammond said the ceremony brings people to celebrate the newly improved residence hall. The Department of Physics, Astronomy, and Geosciences will present their third planetarium show of the semester Friday at 7 and 8 p.m. Dr. Martha Leek will present From the Moon to Mars, the new space race, which will show the plans for future manned space missions to the moon and eventually to Mars. If weather permits, the observatory will be open to see the heavenly bodies, including the moon and Mars. Tickets to the show are free to the public. Attention all VSU tailgaters, there will be a chili cook-off prior to the VSU West Georgia game Saturday, November 5th. Contestants are judged on the best costume, best presentation, and best tent. They will have a chance to win up to $300. The registration fee is $25, and for more information, contact the Office of Special Events at 333-7446. Would you like to improve your physical energy and liven up your spirits a little bit more? The VSU Campus Recreation will offer a one-hour session for interested faculty, staff, and students. The session will discuss information related to eating habits, exercise, and weight. Campus Recreation will also talk about as many programs it offers. This session will take place November 10th from 7 to 8 p.m. in Langdale Hall. Cameras on VSU campus have long been a problem, but a situation that has long plagued the security efforts on campus are coming to an end. The 20 cameras on campus are being replaced with digital cameras. There will be cameras installed on 14 of the new emergency phones. According to Robert Tyndall of VSU Plant Operations, the funding for the new cameras was provided by the state, which is about $400,000. The cameras will be located in the parking lots, Hugh C. Bailey Science Center, and West Hall. VSU is competing with West Georgia in the third annual Blazer Blood Drive. The American Red Cross has set a goal of 116 units for the five-hour blood drive, but West Georgia has already collected 140 units last week. The Assistant Director of Student Life said this event seeks friendly competition between rival universities and is a great way to build school spirit and participate in a great cause at the same time. The blood drive will be held from, 10, from 12 p.m. on the second floor of the University Union in the Camellia Room. And the winning school will be announced during Saturday's game, Saturday afternoon at Baysmore Heiser Stadium. Thanks for watching. I'm Don Dudley. And I'm Sabrina Vasquez. Have a great week. Hello and welcome to News 11. I'm Colleen McPhee. And I'm Candace Hester. Coming up, we'll update you on our local election results. And we'll tell you about other election totals from across the country. And I'm Antoine Mari. I'm going to tell you exactly what the Vikings feel they must do in order to win Friday night's game. News 11 starts now.
The local election results are in from last night. There were clear-cut winners and close calls. City Council incumbent J.R. Sessions needed 45% of the vote to retain his seat, but he fell 5% short of that winning mark. Sessions will face off with Alvin Payton Jr. in a runoff election for the Valdosta City Council District 4 seat. The election will be held on December 6th, and advanced voting begins on November 28th. In District 6 of the Valdosta City Council, incumbent Robert Yost held on to the position with over 540 votes. Yost's opponent was Brian Fleming, who received 482 votes. In the Valdosta School Board elections, Mike Pitts won over incumbent Joe B. Crane Sr. for the District 4 seat. Trey Sherwood beat incumbent Neil Myers for the District 5 seat with over 800 votes. In District 6, incumbent Bill Love won over Charles Weatherington Jr. And finally, the Valdosta School Board at-large seat went to Gina fowler Beeland, who had nearly 2,000 votes. In the city of Hayhira, John, Johnny Stalvey won over Scott Williams for the position of mayor. In District 1, incumbent Terry Benjamin beat Wilman Jerry Stanley. Finally, the city of Hayhira District 4 seat goes to Rose Adams. In the city of Lake Park elections, Keith Sandlin won the seat for mayor over Russell H. Lane. And you can see the results of the at-large representatives where the top four serve. The winners last night were Ronald Carter, Eric Schindler, Jesse Fender, and Paul Mulkey. Though this year was not a presidential election year, voter turnout for yesterday's election here in Lowndes County was low. Less than 17% of registered voters showed up at the polls to elect city council and school board members. The assistant supervisor of elections said the turnout was about average for a local election and that it's hard to predict voter turnout. However, this year's figures are 10% higher than four years ago. Atlanta Mayor Shirley Franklin has a reason to celebrate today. Franklin is re-elected for her second term to be mayor of Atlanta. She defeated Dave Walker, Glenn S. Wrightson, and James Harris by taking 91% of the votes. Franklin promises to work harder in making the city of Atlanta better. She plans to improve the city's public school system, as well as bring job opportunities and lessen the number of homeless people. One political analyst calls the Virginia governor's race a major defeat for President Bush and the GOP. Democratic Lieutenant Governor Tim Kaine defeated Republican challenger Jerry Kilgore by more than five percentage points. Kaine won the governor's race even though Bush appeared with Kilgore at an election eve rally in Richmond. CNN's Bob Franken has more on this and other political races from Election Day. The President of the United States, George W. Bush. On election eve in closely watched Virginia, the Republican candidate for Governor Jerry Kilgore called in President Bush for a last-minute appearance. On election Tonight, night, Kilgore lost. Tonight we may have lost a battle, but we have not and will not lose this war. It was a similar story in New Jersey. A Democrat won, pulling the president's coattails out from under the Republican. Tonight I want to thank the people of New Jersey for rejecting the Bush Rove tactics that we see in politics. It was not a shutout. In overwhelmingly Democratic New York City, the GOP's Michael Bloomberg won in a landslide. But Bloomberg is not exactly considered a prototype Republican. Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger and First Lady Maria Shriver. Arnold Schwarzenegger is not really a prototype anything in politics. Believe it or not, I even want to thank the people who were so passionately vocal against us. I guess I didn't do a good enough job to convince them otherwise. <laughs> Since taking over the State House two years ago in California, Schwarzenegger has been overtaken by the realities of governing and is now facing the reality of losing his fight for signature ballot initiatives. It was not the best of nights for Republicans nationwide. We expect Democrats to declare this a preview of coming attractions. Today's Senate hearings began over whether energy executives should have to swear to tell the truth before a congressional panel. The CEOs of ExxonMobil, Chevron, Conoco, and other oil giants appeared before the joint hearing of the Senate Energy and Commerce Committees. Some members of Congress are calling for a windfall profits tax with the money distributed to lower income consumers to help with energy costs.
The industry's third quarter profits jumped 62 percent to equal over $25 billion. ExxonMobil, the nation's biggest oil company, posted the largest corporate profit. Stocks and oil companies have also jumped up some 40 percent. The Texas woman convicted of drowning her children in a bathtub may get a new trial. In January, the Texas First Court of Appeals overturned Andrea Yates' murder conviction after finding that an expert prosecution witness presented false testimony. Dr. Park Dietz said Yates may have been influenced by an episode of the Law & Order television program, but that episode never existed. Yates was convicted of capital murder in March of 2002 and sentenced to life in prison for the 2001 deaths of, her, of three of her five children. She had a well-documented history of postpartum depression, and her attorneys argued that she suffered from postpartum psychosis. But a jury in Houston rejected her plea of not guilty by reason of insanity. Coming up, we'll tell you about a new business agreement for Georgia. And Jamal Ferguson will join us with sports. Stay with us. Plastic ones last longer. Pork bellies close steady due to speculation and demand for bacon-related products. Read me this one, Daddy. Okay, honey. The less art kids get, the more it shows. Are yours getting enough? Art. Ask for more. Americansforthearts.org Drivers face all kinds of distractions. Before your wireless phone becomes one of them, stop. Drive safely. Keep your phone in easy reach and dial sensibly. In bad weather or traffic, call later and use a hands-free device. Remember, with wireless, safety is your call. This is firstgov.gov. Brand new student loan applications on the site, baby. This calls for a celebration. <laughs> Where we're obsessed with getting you government information. Make it doodle dandy. Make it... What are those? Government surplus cars for auction. You posted those online last time. No, you did. I'm posting them online this time. Just log on or email us and get what you need. Firstgov.gov. Governor Sonny Perdue announced two new business agreements between the state and Israel. The two companies that will take part in the agreements are ClickFox and Veritas Venture Partners. Both of the companies specialize in technology. This is Governor Perdue's first agreement with the Middle Eastern country. He will meet with Prime Minister Ariel Sharon today. Two years ago, the financial outlook of the HOPE Scholarship Program was not good, but projections from this year are on an upswing due to reducing college and technical school enrol enrollment and skyrocketing lottery ticket sales. The once unstable scholarship program is now evening out. The HOPE budget has $54 million left over from the fiscal year. Lottery sales rose 16%, and if sales do not drop, the HOPE Scholarship Program will remain active. Georgia company Coca-Cola will release a brand new flavor to consumers. Black Cherry Vanilla is the new flavor and will include regular and diet versions. Coca-Cola Senior Vice President Katie Bain says the popularity rise of diet and cherry flavored sodas prompted Coke to develop the new flavor. On the other hand, the company will temporarily discontinue both regular and diet vanilla Coke at the end of this year. Black Cherry Vanilla Coke will hit stores this upcoming January. Starting February 9th, the Georgia Department of Revenue will list the names of individuals and businesses that have a record of not paying their state taxes. The department says that there are about 400 individuals and businesses that have not paid their taxes and have had their cases brought before the Superior Court. This list will be available on the State of Georgia's website. As reported last week on News 11, Valwood School is hosting Victory for Victoria. Eight-year-old Victoria Newsom sadly lost her battle with cancer early Sunday morning. Victory for Victoria is a community-wide celebration of life that is raising money for her family. Valwood School estimates that 280 runners have already signed up, but they hope to have at least 500 participants. Valwood Secretary Becky Weatherington says that Victoria was a spunky, energetic, lovely girl whose smile lit up her face and had a lot of joy in her, even though she was struggling. 
In medical news, rates of syphilis are on the rise. Gonorrhea is on the decline, according to the Center for Disease Control. The nation's gonorrhea rate fell to 113 cases per 100,000 people last year, which is the lowest since the government started tracking the cases in 1941. Researchers say that this rise and fall can be explained by the nature of syphilis outbreaks and a rise in risk, risky behavior among gay men. Swinging your golf club can get you more than just a hole-in-one these days. You can now make a difference in your community. News 11's Candace Hester has more. Getting involved in your community and making a contribution has never been easier or more fun thanks to the Valdosta YMCA. They are hosting their annual golf tournament to benefit the United Way. Well, this is our 16th annual golf tournament, so we've done it for a few years here. We feel we've got it down pat, pretty much. It's going to be at Kinderloo, and it's on Thursday, November 17th. Teeing off at the Kinderloo Forest Golf Club, this annual event has become a favorite for area golfers, with all proceeds benefiting the United Way annual campaign. I am excited about the competition. I'm a big golfer myself, so you know this is right up my alley. So I'm going to play on the YMCA's team. And Looking forward to it. Karen Coslow, Executive Director for the United Way, says that the annual golf tournament is their biggest fundraiser all year. And with still more than half of the month to go, the United Way has already reached 45% of their goal. I've been out testing the golf course all morning here at Kinderloo Forest, and I can tell they're ready for the tournament. For News 11, I'm Candace Hester. When we come back, Jamal Ferguson will join us with sports. But first, here's a quick look at your local weather. Stay with us. My name is PFC Eunice Guerra. What I like about the National Guard is I can be, you know, gung-ho and, and go out there and do, you know, really awesome things, stuff that, you know, reg civilians, you know, wouldn't understand. And then I get to go home and, you know, put on a pair of jeans. And I wanted to be a civilian and then turn around and be a soldier. Defend freedom. In the Army National Guard, you can. Visit 1-800-GO-GUARD.COM today. I was in an accident and had to go in an ambulance. It hurt a lot and I was real scared. Daddy looks scared too. Where are they, where are they taking it? Gonna... Every two seconds, someone needs blood. Accident victims, cancer patients, children. Please call the American Red Cross at 1-800-GIVE-LIFE because someone needs you right now. The girl. Was it you who saved my life? For me, it's giving the best of myself. For me, it's the professional team environment and the mutual respect that I share with my colleagues. For me, it's providing my patients with the best and safest care possible. For me, it's having the latest in health care technologies and the privilege of providing the best health care to America's veterans. We are the nurses of VA. VACareers.com, a career in caring. Jamal Ferguson joins us now with sports. Thanks, Candace. Unfortunately, there was no rallying back this time for the Valdosta State Blazers. The Blazers dug themselves a hole by turning over the ball seven times and allowing West Georgia to record nine sacks en route to a 29-15 loss this weekend. The Braves snapped a five-game losing streak to VSU. VSU pulled within 10 with a 10-yard run by Vincent Brown and even closer with a career-long 52-yard field goal by Michael Green, which made it 22-15. However, that would be the closest VSU would ever get. The Blazers finished the regular season 9-2 and 7-2, which is the second in the conference. After ending the regular season on a sour note Saturday with the loss to West Georgia, the, B Georgia, the Blazers dropped to third in the final region poll and ninth in the national poll. The Blazers licked their wounds and got back to practice field to prepare for the title defense against another nemesis in the first round of the Division II playoffs when the Lions of North Alabama came to town. The Blazers needed timely defense to force three interceptions and Vincent Brown's 137 rushing yards defeated the Lions last month 26-23. Saturday's game will begin at 1 p.m. at Bazemore Heider Stadium. The VSU cross-country team finished this season last weekend in Dade City, Florida, the regional tournament, 
which the women did not place, the men finished a respectable 10th. Coach Craig Barnes said that Harding University was the team to beat because they had won the region the past couple of years and ended up winning the region this year. Coach Barnes said he can't wait to start preparing for next year's season, which will be a task. The Blazers will lose five men and two women senior runners. VSU Volleyball ended its season on a disappointing note last weekend, dropping the conference rivals Montevallo and West Alabama on Friday. The Blazers split the first two games with Montevallo before losing the final game on Saturday's loss in Carlton to the Tigers of West Alabama, dropping 3 to nothing. VSU ends the season at 10 and 23 overall and 1 and 13 in the conference. The Lounge Vikings prepare for the next hurdle in defense for their state title. But as the postseason advances, Vikings coach Randy McPherson said, everybody's good. News 11's Antoine Marie finds out just what the Vikings are doing to get ready for the difficult game ahead. The Vikings defense of the state title began last Friday night with a convincing 42-18 victory over the Douglas Astros. With the win, the Vikings advance to the second round of the 5A state playoffs where they take on the Union Grove Wolverines. Oh, they, have, they have a very good offense. They run, they run a spread offense, four wide receivers. They throw the ball a lot. You got a big running back, uh, 215 pounds, very fast. Uh, defensively, uh, they're, they're also very sound. It's, it's going to be a good football team. The Wolverines bring their 92 record more than two hours south take on the Vikings Friday night. But the Vikings lie in wait, knowing exactly what they must do in order to take the next step to the Georgia Dome and the most important game after. Make sure we got good pass coverage. We got to make sure we have a good pass rush. And we got to make sure we control the ball on offense. Don't, don't give them any turnovers. Lowndes won this region for the second consecutive year. By doing so, they get the luxury of posting the second round playoff game at Martin Stadium. Tickets can be purchased here at the Board of Education building on Norman Drive for $10 a piece. For News 11, I'm Antoine Mari. Also, Lion Hedge coach McPherson was also named 1-5A Regional Coach of the Year for the second consecutive time. There were also eight Vikings who were named to the all-region team. And let's not forget, of course, Valdosta Wildcats are also in the playoffs this weekend. They will take on Camden County Wildcats this weekend. This matchup will be a repeat of the 2003 state championship. In baseball, free agent reliever Ugorth Ubon was arrested and held on Tuesday for attempted murder. Ubon, a group of men, allegedly attacked five workers with a machete and poured gasoline on them in an attempt to set them on fire. Orban insisted he had nothing to do with the violence. Last year, his mother was kidnapped and held a sec for $6 million ransom. Orban said the charge comes from people trying to take advantage of him. Now to basketball. The Atlanta Hawks started this season off on the wrong foot, losing their three games on the road trip to the West. Last night, for the home opener, the Hawks faced Kobe Bryant and the L.A. Lakers. Bryant dropped in 37 points, leading all scores, and Joe Johnson led the Hawks with 26 points as the Lakers handed the Hawks their fourth straight loss. And that's all we have for sports this weekend. Candace? Thanks, Jamal. Coming up, we'll tell you about Gornto Road closing. Stay with us. Education is the key that opens a door to endless opportunities, adventures, and experiences. Without education, life is a continuing cycle of closed doors. This message brought to you by the United States Air Force because we know the value of a good education. Guys, what do you got? You got a 28 year old black male, got three gunshot wounds in the chest. One upper chest, one lower chest, one center. Bleeding a lot. There are two paths a child can take. Sir, try not to move. We have a 28 year old male. For over 25 years, we've been helping children choose the right one. Communities and schools, helping kids stay in school and prepare for life.
He gave the best years of his life in defense of our country. He lost his leg during Desert Storm. He struggles every day to cope with this disability. Don't you think he's done enough? Why don't you do your part? Don't take a hero's space. Miss Valdosta, Amanda Kozak, talks about winning the crown and her hopes for the future. News 11's Kimberly Lake has more. Amanda Kozak, a senior at VSU, currently holds the title for Miss Valdosta. Amanda, who previously won Miss Warner Robins and was first runner-up in Miss Georgia 2005, admits pageants have not always been a priority in her life. I was actually in high school and people told me I should do it because I was dancing and you make some money. And so I did a couple and then I stopped. And then my senior year, I was trying to figure out how to make more money for college. And so I started doing them and I've been doing really well since. Although winning the crown has its perks, Amanda finds her work out of the spotlight more rewarding. My platform is the Big Brothers Big Sisters program, emphasis on mentoring. And it's very important to me because of so many children that really do need it. I say, if you want to make a difference, this is the way. There's no better thing than to see a child smiling at you and is so happy to see you. Amanda will be representing Valdosta in the upcoming Miss Georgia pageant, and she hopes winning the title will bring her one step closer to her dream. For pageantry, I would love to be Miss America. I would love to. I was so close to being Miss Georgia, and I'm glad the Lord didn't make me Miss Georgia at that time because I feel like he wants me to graduate first before I try to, to go to that level. And Monica, who's Miss Georgia now, is fabulous. So she'll, she'll do a great job. And so maybe next year I'll be more ready for it. But I would love to be Miss America. And with her determination, dedication, and a little luck, she just might succeed. For News 11, I'm Kimberly Lake. Valdosta Lounge Recreation, Parks, and Community Affairs Department holds a homework assistance program Monday through Thursday from 4 until 6 and on Fridays from 3 until 5. Michael Foster, a college student from Valdosta Tech, tutors the children. This program is targeted towards students of all ages. The program is free. Today, Gornto Road became a one-lane road when the city began construction that is estimated to be completed in February. The directional flow of traffic will head northbound starting at High Point Road and ending south of the YMCA entrance. Drivers are encouraged to use alternate routes. The Turner Center for the Arts has become South Georgia's premier arts center here in Valdosta. The Arts Center presents monthly exhibits of works by local, national, and international artists. The new center has four rotating galleries to show all visitors its exciting art collection. The Turner Center for the Arts is supported by the city, county, and state, as well as local companies in order for the Lowndes Valdosta Arts Commission to coordinate many of the area cultural activities. The center's operating hours are 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Thursdays and 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Friday and Saturday. VSU Theater brings Charles Dickens' timeless Christmas classic, A Christmas Carol, to life in the lively musical Scrooge. Tiny Tim, Bob Cratchit, Mr. Fezwig, and the surly Ebenezer Scrooge are larger than life in the engaging musical performance. The curtain goes up tomorrow night at 7.30 in Sawyer Theater and runs through Saturday, November 19th. The Student Recreation Center is hosting a health fair Wednesday, November 16th from 3 p.m. until 6 p.m. Flu season is in full swing and this is the student's last chance to get a flu shot on campus. The cost is $15. Other health services available include body composition and blood pressure. This event is for VSU students and SRC members only. In other health news, VSU Students Health Center is offering free HIV testing Thursday, November 17th at the Farber Health Clinic from 9 a.m. to noon and 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Attention art enthusiasts, the VSU Fine Arts Gallery will unveil its Fall 2005 Senior Expedition. Senior art majors will display their best works in media such as animation, paintings, photography, and others. The opening reception is on November 13th from 2 to 4 p.m. Thanks for watching us this week. I'm Candace Hester. And I'm Colleen McPhee. Have a great week.